Welcome back to an incredibly cold workshop. Uh, it's snowing outside. It's particularly freezing cold because the roller shutters have just failed again. Uh, this time they've failed open, so at least I could get in, but now I can't leave until they're fixed. So I've got a guy on the way to come and fix those with a bit of luck. I'm not spending more of my time doing it. Long story. Anyway, I made a couple of videos over the last few weeks and they were really, really dull. It was be me basically moving out of here uh, and being grumpy, which I don't think anybody wants to see. So I'll show you, you'll see some bits as I move around that the, the trailer's getting loaded up, the shelves are coming down. But the other thing I've got to do before I move out is get that car back together again, starting with sorting out the drivetrain. Uh, you remember if you're a watcher of this channel that I managed to completely kill uh, one of my electric motors, not completely, but temporarily f screw up, nearly used other words then, uh, my electric motor by putting too much axial load on one of the bearings um, because this pin uh, in the middle of the gearbox was pushing on the, um, on the drive shaft in the middle of the motor. And so before I do anything else, if I'm gonna get this whole drivetrain back together, A, I've got to cut this pin down and B, back here, I've got my new motor. I'm gonna fix the old one, but I've got a new motor to swap in, um, which I need to take the gearbox off. So first job, angle grinder, cut this pin down. Uh, second job, um, take the motor apart. Um, just a sort of caveat to all this, I always had lots of plans about doing everything right this time, getting everything all clean and neat and painted and painting the engine bay and doing all that stuff. None of that's gonna happen um, because I've gotta be out of here in such a rush. Uh, and even more of a rush because I keep losing time because the roller shutter keeps failing for various reasons. So I either can't get in uh, or can't leave or whatever it may be. So nothing pretty, just getting this car so it's mobile again and partly just so that I can move a lot of the parts around inside the car. There we go, no more axial load. A Little bit of a tidy up with the flat wheel, and I think that's good to go. Obviously, get rid of all the uh, shavings as well. Right, next up, get this gearbox off uh, the new motor. Um, so obviously in the Outlander, this sits on the back axle. This is basically the rear diff, just with a dirty great electric motor in it. Put a sheet down to keep muck to a minimum um, and just avoid any sort of bits of crap getting in there in case I have to open it up in case I want to use this gearbox again um, but basically just crack the bolts off take all the ancillaries off uh, and I should be left with just this motor uh, that I can swap in uh, I can swap my pipes and cables over uh, from the other motor on uh, and then that's ready to bolt up to the gearbox uh, and it's all ready to go in Now what I can't remember, if there's anything that holds this into the gearbox beyond those bolts, whether there's any sealant or there's any mechanical linkage. Let's give it a few taps with the rubber mallet and see if it comes away. starting to separate. There we 
go. One gearbox. So I'm going to put that to one side so that I can use it in future if needs be. Maybe when I fix the other motor, stick this back on and I've got an option for a front wheel drive drivetrain. So yeah, need to look after that and make sure that gets wrapped up somehow. With everything bolted onto the motor, I can look at getting it hooked back up to the gearbox with the adapter plate in the middle. Not a pretty adapter plate, but it works. Just need to find all the right bolts and get everything bolted together and torqued up. Look at that, I put them all in one bag. First step is to bolt the adapter plate to the motor um, because the bolts for the motor go into the face so they have to go through the adapter plate um, so you just have to make sure the adapter plate's lined up and then I can get those bolts in and then flip it up on its end it stands quite nicely on here get the um, coupler aligned plenty of lube on the coupler get those aligned and bolted up there it is, all stacked up. Uh, it's just got the bolts to go in for the gearbox. Um, what you can see from the fact that this is sitting really flush, so flush that there's a lot of friction, um, is that there's no axial pressure on the motor anymore. Having taken that little nib off the end of the shaft, it's definitely not pressing on the back bearing on the motor anymore. So I can bolt that up with confidence and then that's ready to go in. And there goes my phone. To call it a day there, because I'm losing feeling in my fingers, it's so cold, uh, I want to get back. But some good progress made, I'll get the bolts in before I go. Uh, and then next video, I'll probably try and drop that back into the car um, and start putting the front end all back together again, put the inverter in, put the charger in, etc. Um, put the cooling loop back together. It'll take a few episodes. I'm sort of chopping and changing back and forth between doing that, which is quite good fun, and slowly dismantling all the shelves and putting stuff in the car and starting to take stuff home again. Um, trying to find spaces for everything because um, there's only so much that's gonna go into my storage unit. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Shut up phone. Uh, and yeah, hopefully a bit more actual EV content now, rather than just me grumbling about losing my garage. Bye-bye.